Newly elected President Biden is already making some big changes in immigration policy. Tonight on Cronkite News, we'll have reaction from those who would be impacted. Plus, how some of the top ballet dancers in the state had to be more flexible than ever while competing during the pandemic. And later this half hour on Break It Down, the new wave of parenting that caters to your child. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Serena Raboyne. Thank you for joining us. On his first day in office, President Biden signed an executive order that could provide a clear path to citizenship for almost all undocumented immigrants in the United States. Cronkite News reporter Ryan Vlahovich has the details on what the future looks like for immigrants in need. It's called the U.S. Citizenship Act, and it's an executive order from the Biden administration that could be the break that undocumented immigrants have been asking for. But what does the undocumented community here in Phoenix think about it? Does the act represent hope, or has the community lost faith in promises? Erlene de Calderon arrived in Arizona in 2005 in search of the American dream. Now, almost 21 years later, she says she found something else. My heart is so disappointed in democracy and these presidents that I don't believe them. They only manipulate the community, our people, so we give our soul with the votes and everything they do to be reelected. According to an analysis by the Migration Policy Institute, 11 million undocumented immigrants were living in the country in 2018, with 281,000 in Arizona alone. Calderon is one of them. <laughs> As a mother of four, Calderon says that her family is the most important thing to her and that she loves this country. But even when the new immigration plan seems full of hope, she is still skeptical. It's an easy way to buy our dreams, telling us that they will give us an amnesty and we again will continue to believe them. The bill would give immediate residence status to all immigrants living in the United States prior to 2021, if they meet certain requirements. One of the important requirements is not having a criminal history or a pending criminal investigation. But with any immigration bill, it has a long way to go before it's made a law. It's going to be presented to Congress. Congress has to enact it into law, uh, pass it to, to the Senate, and then they will uh, ratify it into law, but it still has to approve. Calderon is aware of that. I see moms, my community, running, getting their Mexican passport, translating their birth certificate. There is confusion because this is not a law yet. The executive order would also allow immigrants to apply to be citizens just in time for the next election. And for Elinda Calderon, only one solution exists to press forward. The world changed and we have to change and we have to be prepared for whatever is coming. The last time that an immigration reform passed was in 1986 when Ronald Reagan signed the law providing amnesty to three million undocumented people. Biden's U.S. Citizenship Act was already sent to Congress. In the Broadcast Center, Ryan Vlahovich, Cronkite News. It's been over a year since the coronavirus started making headlines and the impact of the virus is still being felt across Arizona. Just today, local health officials reported an additional 196 deaths related to the virus. That brings the state's total number of fatalities to over 13,000. And now there are multiple variants of COVID-19 popping up across the world, including the UK variant, which has been found in a handful of cases here in Arizona. Labs run by Arizona State University helped detect that variant in the state last week. And now scientists from our top three public universities are working together to detect any dangerous mutations. The vaccine, but the vaccines by Pfizer and Moderna do offer immunity to the UK variant. For more info on getting vaccinated, go to azdhs.gov slash find vaccine. The Glendale Fire Department has created COVID-19 kits to give to family members during a crisis. The 500 kits include a mask, hand sanitizer, and information about COVID-19 resources, including a list of COVID-19 testing sites, vaccination information, and current hospital visitation policies. Fire trucks across, across Glendale will distribute the, 
the kits when they respond to COVID-related calls. The Youth American Grand Prix Ballet held its fifth annual competition in Phoenix. This year looked a little different than years past because of the pandemic, but that didn't stop some of the talented dancers from earning scholarships and achievements for their hard work. Cronkite reporter Rayleigh Klein takes us backstage to see how this year kept competitors on their toes. The Youth American Grand Prix International Ballet Competition is the world's largest network for ballet dance. With a focus on education, scholarship, and networking, the organization helps dancers ages 9 to 19 thrive all over the world. COVID-19 introduced some new challenges to this year's competition, but the performers put their best slipper forward and stayed on point. This year, depending on the location and the health restrictions, some students had to wear masks on stage. They did not have to in Phoenix. Um, they did have to wear them up until they got on the stage, throw it in the wing, dance, put it back on. We all wore masks the whole time. Um, another example, some cities, they did not have an audience. Phoenix, they were allowed to, the parents were allowed to come in and watch. So it, it really just depends on that theater and that city, but lots of differences this year. Although Phoenix has fewer restrictions in some cities, the dancers still had to make critical adjustments and think a little differently this time around. This year it was how to sit in the hall and how many people in the hall and how many people in the dressing rooms and things that you've never had to even consider were important this year. Yet with precision and creativity, dancers have been able to make the most of their new reality and YAGP plans to follow that same mantra return to what they're known for. So I think for YAGP especially, the goal is just to keep doing what they were doing before and go back to that well-oiled machine and just get back on that system because it works so beautifully and everybody loves it. The Youth American Grand Prix will continue touring the rest of the season, offering scholarships to hundreds of dancers. For more information, visit yagp.org. Rayleigh Klein, Cronkite News. Coming up next on Cronkite News, you could get fined for not wearing a mask while traveling. After the break, we'll tell you just how much you might have to pay if you refuse to mask up. Also, how are the Girl Scouts turning lemons into lemon ups during the pandemic? The great thing is to last and get your work done and see and hear and learn and understand. And write when there is something that you know, and not before, and not too damned much after. Coming in April to Arizona PBS. Stream the best of PBS on any device with the PBS video app. All your favorite drama, history, science, news and documentaries all in one place watch your pbs station live or catch up on the shows you missed discover new favorites from pbs and locally produced shows from your station sign in and start streaming today this is our story the black church has sustained the african-american people from the days of slavery to this day I don't know how we could have survived as a people without it. The role of music in the black church is everything. We had to have some individual and institutional arm in order to preserve our sanity. We are a testament to the goodness and the grace of God. The Black Church. Coming in February to Arizona PBS. Take a journey with Arizona PBS. Join us every Sunday afternoon for Destination Drama. Watch all your favorite PBS dramas, like Grandchester. I'm William Davenport, new vicar of Grandchester. Pole Dark. Nothing in my life has meaning without you. And Victoria. I know that I'm young, but I know my duty. And if you missed a recent primetime drama, we'll help you catch up on those, too. Destination Drama, every Sunday afternoon at 1, only on Arizona PBS. It's primetime on your time. Watch Prime Afternoons every weekday on Arizona PBS. Did you miss a show in the evening? Then catch up on Prime Afternoons, your favorite dramas. No more bloody heroics. Antiques Roadshow. Really? Nature and Nova. 
It's time to reintroduce some wonder into this miracle of nature. All of the best from PBS on Prime Afternoons. Weekdays starting at 1.30, only on Arizona PBS. Every day I wake up, my first thought is how can I serve this community? The biggest hurdle was not taking PTSD personally. Would you welcome, please, the amazing. Everybody that watches this, they say that I am the greatest that they've ever seen. If you violate the federal transportation face mask requirement, you may have to pay a fine. The Transportation Secretary and Administration says the first offense is $250. That can grow up to $1,500 for repeated violations. These penalties may be in addition to others imposed by operators like U.S. Airlines. Some have banned passengers who do not follow the rules. The Federal Aviation Administration also says it will crack down on anyone who disrupts a flight over wearing a mask. The federal mask requirement took effect earlier this week. It requires face coverings on trains, airplanes and buses, as well as their hubs. It's that time of year again where the Girl Scouts are selling cookies on every corner. However, this year you cannot expect a knock on your front door. Cronkite News reporter Caitlin Keenahan talks about the changes to selling season amidst a pandemic. Hi. You can't see their smiles, oh, yes. but you sure won't miss the neon green sign. The Girl Scouts look a bit different this year. We have to do our meetings virtual, which is a little harder because you just want to see them. And with them in person, you can't hug each Girl Scout by, which makes me really sad. The organization had to take lemons and turn them into lemon ups. The lemon ups are new from this year. We had to come up with just alternative ways that girls can still participate and just kind of still have something to look forward to in this kind of time of uncertainty when a lot of our other programs have had to kind of shift. The pandemic has wrecked a lot of things this year, but one thing it cannot take away from us are the delicious cookies. We're doing a drive through where cars can just drive by. Want to play with cars or pack? The girls will pack up all their cookies in a nice bag and give it to them, and they could just go and enjoy their cookies. Can you get it? Kendra Ayaza is a fourth grader at Lakeview Elementary. Taking turns wearing the helmet. She's yeah. what the Girl Scouts call a cookie boss. I haven't met a single cookie boss who doesn't get so into it. Last year, Kendra was one of the top sellers in Troop 7073. If the booth was four hours long or more, I would still do it because I know the more longer it is, the more sales I'm going to get. She sold 1,000 boxes. So I would risk my time just to get more cookies so I can work harder so I know more about business, business stuff. Adult words are tough, but the concepts are invaluable. And this is when we have to race cars. We're teaching them to be entrepreneurs and uh, marketing and learning to budget and all that stuff. It's not business as usual, but it's in line with the times. Kendra says the pandemic will not hold her back. I'm going around to 500, 600, 500 to 700. In Phoenix, Caitlin Keenahan, Cronkite News. To find a drive through Girl Scout cookie location near you, download the Cookie Finder app. There are over 20 rotating locations throughout the week in the Phoenix area alone. Up next, the so-called Trump train is up for sale here in AZ. After the break, we'll tell you how much the one-of-a-kind bus would set you back and where to go to buy it. Stick around. Ready to watch the best of PBS anytime, anywhere, on nearly any device? It's easy with the free PBS Video app. Simply download the PBS Video app on your mobile or streaming device. Now you can watch the latest PBS episodes or catch up on the shows you missed. And when you support your local station, you can get PBS Passport, giving you access to more episodes, more specials, more of what you love. There's never been a more important time to make sure facts and the truth are driving conversation. Washington Week is an island of civil discourse in a chaotic media environment. On Friday night, we gather the best reporters in the nation to unpack what's really happening and have a conversation that's not about point of view, but about informing the American people. Washington Week, 
All new Friday night at 7 on Arizona PBS. Hi, I'm Henry Louis Gates Jr. Thank you for watching my newest series, The Black Church. This is our story, this is our song, right here on Arizona PBS. On Masterpiece. Me is no free. The well-being of the workers is the key to the success of a plantation. Such relief. A true gentleman to come to us and save us here. We shall have the finest sugar crop in all of Jamaica. I must confess, I thought I should never again be blessed with love. Ooh. 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 I will need you all to work seven full days a week from now on. We'll be free, no. Just like you. The Long Song on Masterpiece. All new, Sunday night at 9 on Arizona PBS. PBS, where the drama is on Sunday nights on Masterpiece. Miss Scarlet and the Duke. That ghostly figure is no random woman. She was my wife. Followed by all creatures great and small. Looks like a good turnout for the Darby Fair. And the long song. We shall have the finest sugar crop in all of Jamaica. Miss Scarlet and the Duke. All creatures great and small. And the long song on Masterpiece. Sunday on Arizona PBS. The Trump train, which made its way across the nation last year, is now up for sale on Craigslist. The ad out of Queen Creek lists the vehicle for $135,000. The listing owner says it's the only one in existence. The bus has had guests such as Donald Trump Jr. and former Sheriff Joe Arpaio on board. Other Arizona politicians to take a ride on the Trump train include Congressman David Schweikert and Paul Gosar. But the former president and vice president never rode in it, according to the listing because Secret Service rules wouldn't allow them as the bus is not bulletproof. The Trump train was built for more than a million dollars as an unofficial 2020 campaign bus. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.